I'm going to play Kaylee here for a minute and make sure I have the clicker and that the big button works. But um, Thank you guys so much for taking time to be here today. It is such a pleasure and a privilege to be with you all, to be in person, to see your smiling faces. Um, I do also want to acknowledge that I am here on behalf not only of Allied Behavioral Health Solutions, but also of AIM High Tennessee. Um, Angela sends her regards and her regrets. Um, she and I spoke this morning, um, and very much she was like, who's there and where are people? And so just know, um, if you know Angela Webster, she misses you. And if you don't, she would like to meet you. Um, so in this place today, we're going to spend some time thinking about infant mental health and how AIM High Tennessee and others like Allied Behavioral Health Solutions are moving forward our infant and early childhood mental health workforce for the state. That big button. There are two large buttons. Okay. Um, so curiously, the place we really want to start is to just define what infant and early childhood mental health is. Um, so often when I get the great opportunity to discuss this body of work and all of the providers and professionals who serve young children and families, that's the first question. Lots of people have all kinds of curiosities about what it means to exist in infant and early childhood mental health. Sometimes the guesses are real close, and sometimes they're real curious. But at the end of the day, we define infant and early childhood mental health as the capacity to grow well and love well. And infant mental health really exists across a spectrum from promotion to prevention to intervention and treatment. And so clinically, when we think about mental health providers, masters in social work, clinical psychologists, LPCs, those sorts of folks, um, that clinical services really support birth to five and their caregivers to support relational health, safety, and healing in events of trauma and adversity. So across that continuum, there are a number of programs throughout the state that really fit in all of those boxes. Um, this really is just an example and a sample slice of all the things that Tennessee is already doing. Um, with Child Care Resource and Referral, the Governor's Early Literacy Foundation, within our prevention sector, we're really looking at our evidence-based home visiting, both which is included under McV, but also that that's expanded by state funds. Um, infant and Early Childhood Mental Health Consultation, um, Integrated Pediatric Primary Care, and Regional Intervention Program, and really thinking about treatment and intervention in the place of clinical dyadic services. We're going to talk quite a bit about that in a minute. But dyadic meaning that the child and the family are both engaged in treatment. So, again, back to curious guesses that I get sometimes. Often people will say, how do you do talk therapy with a 10-month-old? The answer is you don't, okay? Um, and so really thinking about what it means to treat the relationship as a whole and to recognize the connection that children have as part of a greater family unit. And we also think in intervention and treatment about early intervention services through the Department of Intellectual and Developmental Disabilities, the Regional Intervention Program also sits here with some of their activities, um, and safe baby courts. And so AIM High's role in addressing and supporting all of that continuum of care is to support the professionals through training, resources, and advocacy to foster early relational health within infants, young children, and families. So for us, infants and young children really are defined as birth to six, and their families are whoever they say they are. So often we refer to that as a psychological caregiver, whoever shows up and says, I care about this kid enough to be here. So. And talking about the work and really the development across the state, it's also really important for us to anchor for a moment to how rapidly that that has developed, to give credence to in the process of story those who've come before us and those that we get the privilege of standing on their shoulders. Um, so the Association of Infant Mental Health in Tennessee really came out of a grassroots project. I love telling this story, y'all. I also should have caveated when I got up here. Um, so I grew up deep, deep in the Appalachian Mountains. That means two things. One, I have an accent that's not going away. Two, I tell stories. So, story. Um, the Association of Infant Mental Health in Tennessee really legitimately got its start by a tiny box in the Connecting for Children Justice um, like handout in 2010 that said, if you like young children, come to this room, there's pizza. I'm not kidding. 
11 years later, we sit in a position where so much has happened, where Aim High Tennessee's really official establishment as a 501c3 um, came in 2017. In 2016, the initial funding really came from carryover funds with the Department of Mental Health through Early Connections Network and also through the Department of Health in collaboration with McVie Programming. And from there, the state really has been able to realize in many ways what it's always known. Babies and families are important. Being able to intervene in the early years makes a difference long term. And when we do it, this is another thing the state loves, it's also cheaper, right? So from 2016 to 2022, we've moved from a staff of one currently to a staff of 13. Within that place about relationships, while we believe that infants and young children best love well and grow well in context of families, we also, as an organization, believe that programs and systems best love well and grow well in the context of relationships. And Aim High Tennessee's got a lot of relationships. So if you're not up there, you should let one of us know, because your logo probably should be, and we'd like to put you up there. But I also promise, because I double-checked this slide a whole bunch, um, most of us are up there. So in that place, we are all connected. Everything we do, even in our work around juvenile justice, and really thinking about court advocacy, at some point comes back to that child was once an infant. We all got here somehow. It's one of the great pieces about infant mental health. We talk about that there is universality. Not everybody in this room has ever had a mental health diagnosis. Not everybody in this room has ever had a traumatic experience. We've all been three. We all got here somehow, right? So where do we find infant and early childhood mental health in Tennessee? Well, honestly, we find it everywhere, and that's where we should find it. Within our colleges and universities, within childcare and early childhood education, within evidence-based home visiting, um, within wages to support those early childhood educators, really thinking about Head Start, early Head Start, all of the projects in between. And also within our community mental health sector, specifically around programs like child parent psychotherapy, mom power, PCIT, um, and facilitating attuned interactions, which we call FAN. Some of AIM High's efforts currently are well-funded through state collaborations. Specifically to date, there is collaboration with the Department of Health around reflective consultation for evidence-based home visiting, with the Department of Human Services around child care resource and referral, and also child care development block grant funds, um, with the Department of Intellectual and Developmental Disabilities, specifically as it relates to the TEIS program, but also in collaboration. Um, currently with the Department of Children's Services under Building Strong Brain Innovation Grant Funds, with my organization, Allied Behavioral Health Solutions, and then also with Tennessee Voices around infant and early childhood mental health consultation work, which receives its funding through the Department of Mental Health. So in, Aim High Tennessee uses really intentional strategies, the primary one always being relationship, and its efforts for advocacy, workforce development, training and technical assistance, endorsement, and general systems support. So within that, Aim High really has a couple of areas of pretty substantial focus. Again, workforce development, professional development, advocacy and systems development, all of which we very intentionally situate under an umbrella of diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. Um, and really for the 2022 year, our three advocacy priorities as Aim High Tennessee sit around um, real increased awareness of preschool expulsion and the relation to preschool expulsion to later involvement with a variety of services, including child welfare, juvenile justice, and also to long-term academic achievement. Aim High Tennessee, in collaboration with the National Alliance for the Advancement of Infant Mental Health, just polished or published a policy brief Friday? Friday, today's Tuesday. Um, around the role of preschool expulsion to long-term outcomes and with specific systems recommendations. There's a printed copy of that policy brief out on AIM High's table. Um, it was also shared by email with a number of individuals. If you have questions or curiosities about that brief, we definitely want to talk about it with you. Um, we're also very much focused this year. Oh, there's a picture of the brief. Isn't this a cute picture? It's really sweet. Again, you can see it out front. 
Um, also, very intentionally in our work in building the infant and early childhood mental health consultation sector and supporting what exists currently in the state. If you're curious about that, we strongly encourage you to scan that QR code and to find out more information. Um, AIM High Tennessee put together an advisory council in 2021 specific to a broad range of sector representatives for building infant and early childhood mental health consultation statewide. There's also been some initial foundational planning and evaluation of what exists within the state. And lastly, AIM High's key focus for the 2022 year is what we refer to as the Tennessee First Five Training Institute. Now, I also have to caveat. It's a really great name, and it explains what we do real well, and it's a really terrible acronym. No one ever gets it right. It's too many letters. They're too similar. And within that, um, so I'll change back and forth a lot today as we talk through this, but really our focus with AIM High Tennessee is in finding sustainability and expansion for the project with Allied Behavioral Health Solutions around the Tennessee First Five Training Institute. So TFFTI was born um, specifically through a Building Strong Brains Innovation Grant that was initially funded in 2019. Um, but really out of a need and observations for workforce development within clinical mental health providers. Um, and in considerable collaboration with a number of relationships across the state, um, the Tennessee Association of Mental Health Organizations, AIM High Tennessee, was incredibly instrumental in helping us to get this project up and off the ground and to be consistently funded for three years. Um, Tennessee First Five Training Institute, for point of reference, is the only Building Strong Brain Innovation Grant that has been consecutively funded year-to-year -year funding for four years. Um, and so it's a substantial investment from the state. Um, and again, with contributions, Centers of Excellence, the Urban Child Institute are also large partners of ours. And so really, if it were possible, back to our slide on this continuum of services, TFFTI is the circle that wraps around that intervention and treatment block. Someone has to know how to do the things. When the children that we see who get referred because of early childhood abuse or because of incidents of trauma or chronic medical conditions like early childhood cancer, those children have to have a place to go and those families need a place to process how they become a unit in the midst of these experiences. And, this is also a story I tell often, doing clinical services with young children and families who have extensive trauma is not the same thing as doing therapy with a 16-year-old with a recent breakup, okay? So we've got to have a clinically trained workforce. We've got to have people who know how to do this, who really recognize the specialized needs of this population. When we think about infant and early childhood mental health as a public health issue, and it is, and we go back earlier, there was reference to like lead in pops and fluoridated water. We think about promotion activities like fluoride in the water. We want it everywhere. We want 100% of our population to know that like breastfeeding is best, but we also want babies fed. And so here are all the options that you've got. We want everyone to know at initial well child screening what signs of early postpartum depression might be or perinatal mental health disorders. We want that at 100%. We also have our prevention models, our evidence-based home visiting, our, early, our infant and early childhood mental health consultation that's really going to sit with about 40% of our population overall. They're going to catch a good number of things. They're going to be able to see a broad range of families. But there will be this 10% of kids. And I will tell you, while this model absolutely works for infant and early childhood mental health, it's also standard across the age range that there will be about 10% of kids who have higher needs, who need something above and beyond what historically Tennessee system had to offer. So the mission for the Tennessee First Five Training Institute is that we seek to build a high quality clinical workforce to provide dyadic infant and early childhood mental health services across Tennessee and we recognize that the vision is best realized when the support and development of clinicians is accompanied by support and development of systems and leaders who embody infant and early childhood mental health core principles, reflective practice, and uphold fidelity to evidence-based practices. Stories, again. So, I referenced the like, and there's pizza. 
So, building off of that trajectory, in 2017, there was a collaboration between the Centers of Excellence and East Tennessee Children's Hospital that brought in the first clinical training for an evidence-based practice model referred to as child-parent psychotherapy, okay? For anybody who does training, trainings are real expensive. They're like time intensive, they're manpower intensive, you gotta pay national experts. That was also when people traveled, so you got flights and hotels and all the things. There were 35 clinicians in that initial cohort. By the time we were done, more than half of them had left their organizations, and three of them all moved to Florida together. I'm not kidding. We made a great contribution to Florida's early childhood mental health system. Um, and we realized really quickly that that wasn't sustainable and it wasn't going to work. So from that point, when we knew we had to change up something, one of the other pieces that happened was that there was a round of Building Strong Brains Innovation Grant funding that was particular. Um, it happened when um, Haslam left office and Governor Lee came in um, that because of the transition between administrations was very small in funding and very direct in its scope. And so we were initially able to get funded that year to bring in what's referred to as the DC 0 to 5. It's the Diagnostic Classification Manual for Children Birth to 5. Children zero to five have their own diagnostic process and you have to be specially trained to do it, okay? That's a takeaway today, please know. That's a thing. If you got questions, I'd love to talk about it. But we were able to bring in that initial training and we trained 55 clinicians across the state. And with one training, what we saw was a real shift in billing practices. All of a sudden, we went from 4% of our 55 clinicians billing to state Medicaid to 58% of all cases were being billed to Medicaid, which means insurance opens access to services. Kids could get care in places they'd never had it before. So we got three people in Florida. We got half a cohort that left. We suddenly have options to bill for services where it's never been, and we said, what are we going to do? And so we put together this piece around the Tennessee First Five Training Institute and launched that initial cohort in 2019. We also saw in 2020 that evidence-based home visiting expanded to all 95 counties. And so with that, when we developed that Tennessee First Five Training Institute model, we laid out parallel training cohorts. So one sits with our clinical cohort. The individuals who are engaged in that every year enter into a 12-month process where they get approximately 40 hours of continuing education across seven evidence-based practices. They get 50 hours of weekly reflective consultation in addition to a reading syllabus and a whole bunch of other things. We always tell organizations when they agree to participate that this is the equivalent of your clinicians getting a second master's degree. It's massively a commitment. Our organizational leaders cohort also commit to sending two leaders from every organization who participates. Um, and we do ask specifically with these organizations that they contribute someone with decision-making power, a leader in a position who can change systemic expectations, who can redo a schedule, who can realign what the policies and procedures are for that process. Within both cohorts, there is a reading syllabus, it's different, um, but we're also engaged pretty actively in data collection metrics for both of those. Those data collection processes vary a little so that we're identifying both organizational readiness for change and change over time, and also in clinical development and capacity. So, back to pizza. When we first established Tennessee First Five Training Institute, there were five clinicians in the entire state of Tennessee who'd had more than one training on work with children birth to five. Currently, there are 107. We have the availability across the state for any child to be able to access infant and early childhood mental health services within a 30-minute drive time, which is pretty substantial. We've also seen data outcomes year over year across all three cohorts. Um, that we have statistically significant change in clinical knowledge. Clinicians report, even six months after training's end, that they know how to work with infants and young children and families. They are not intimidated by the options for addressing trauma, even severe trauma, collaborating with the court system, being able to interface with child welfare workers and FSWs, thinking about permanency planning and how within that the therapist also functions. 
We also know that across three years, our TFFTI providers have interfaced with 500 children and families across the state. Systemically, for each of our cohorts, we take an assessment that's referred to as the Organizational Readiness for Change Assessment. We call it an ORCA. Um, those ORCAs allow for us to look at what systems commit to, how they see their shift and change over time. This is for our first cohort year, and I will also tell you this is a compilation of all of the organizations who participate. That is not one specific organization. Um, and so what we know is that leaders reported their systems were different after they spent a year with us. Leaders reported that they were more likely to engage in reflection around leadership decisions, to be transparent in their communication with staff, to utilize reflective consultation within their organizations, to address productivity expectations, to make it manageable to see young children and families. This is our cohort two ORCA. Again, second year, still to statistically significant change year over year. Between 2021 and 2022, Tennessee First Five Training Institute, again, we received our third year of funding. I will also say we have been notified by DCS for intent to continue funds for a fourth year for 2023. Um, we were able to provide facilitating attuned interactions training for all safe baby court coordinators across all 12 locations for the state. And we were able to build sustainability for that with in-state trainers. Um, we were able to look at and investigate the opportunity to bring a program referred to as attachment and biobehavioral catch-up to the state. And we were also featured in a journal article with the Zero to Three and at the World Association of Infant Mental Health Conference for being a leader in infant and early childhood mental health workforce development programs. And lastly, we got asked to write a chapter um, around systems development utilizing that diagnostic classification Zero to Five model. So takeaways, here are the things to know. Infant mental health is alive and well within Tennessee. There are lots of things going on, lots of things to be involved in. The state has made considerable contribution to our promotion and prevention sectors, and the current funding for our intervention and treatment sectors is impactful, but it's limited. We know that across all of these domains in three years, we've seen lots of impact, statistically significant impact at I think there's 27 different variables that we look at that we're able to make shift and change in, not only within the individuals who receive the training, but their agencies, long-standing historical impact that goes beyond the fact that we're all gonna change jobs eventually. We also are working really hard to align our data and outcomes collection with a variety of state goals and systems because we know that the work of infant and early childhood mental health and addressing clinical mental health concerns in early childhood really is embedded in so many different places for the state. Um, and so really working to align how we're doing that, how we're collecting it, how we're administering and dem or, yeah, demonstrating it um, really is accessible and can benefit everybody. So if you got a question or a curiosity, you got a demographics that you're looking for, or something that might help your grant, we'd love to collaborate. Really for us as Tennessee First Five Training Institute, what comes next really is consideration around sustainability. We're in active conversation with the Association of Infant Mental Health to make that transition so that TFFTI will live long term with the association um, as it acts as the hub for infant and early childhood mental health training for the state. Um, so that it is all together with all of the other homes. We're really looking at and investigating options for braided funding. Um, I say often that the responsibility for infant and early childhood well-being does not lie with any one body. It's not solely the responsibility of Medicaid or DCS or the Department of Mental Health, but really when it comes to child well-being, it's for all of us. We all benefit long-term, and it is our responsibility to address now. So we're really looking at sustainability on options for braided funding long term. And again, really looking at clear connections and data points in collaboration with safe baby court teams, child welfare, and the budding infant and early childhood mental health consultation expansion, again, in collaboration with Tennessee Voices. Here's AIM High Tennessee's leadership team's contact information if you've got questions directly for them. I will also indicate Kristen Dunn, one of the directors, is in the back. Keena Friday Gilbert was here this morning. And they will both be with you guys tomorrow as well. Here's my contact information. 
I'm also positive you can like track me down or not find somebody who knows me. Um, and I'm always happy to hear from folks, have conversations, and really see what our opportunities for collaboration are. So we're grateful to take some time to think with you about babies and families and to really, again, see your faces. So thanks for having me.